Eggleston Hall, finishing school for ladies. We're about to conduct the most ambitious social experiment since My Fair Lady. Good, that's better. Head up! These students are ten of Britain's most notorious ladettes. But they're about to discover that this finishing school is no joke. What on earth were men doing in your bedroom? And the canopies? Where were the canopies? Simon Cow, eat your heart out, because these are the new witches on the block. They're going to learn how to walk. Five, six. They're going to learn how to talk. Lady. Lady. No, that's coming down your nose, that's horrible. We'll teach them how to cook. <laughs> how to sew, <laughs> and they're going to learn to behave like ladies. There you go, our lady lot was that. I'll go out, get drunk, have a kebab, come home with a cone on my head. <laughs> Two years ago, a new word entered the English language. It was coined to describe a new kind of woman, the ladette. I was driving down the M4 with my top on a notepad. She's one of these new ladette, wants to be one of the lads, booze monsters. Today, ladettes are running wild. They're in danger of becoming a permanent feature of modern life. Now we've come up with a radical solution to this new phenomenon. We're going to send 10 of Britain's most notorious ladettes to an old-fashioned ladies' finishing school. We've reopened what used to be one of the leading schools of its kind, Eggleston Hall in the heart of Teesdale. The school's principal is Jean Broke-Smith, who ran London's leading finishing school, Lucy Clayton's, for over 30 years. Girls were groomed to be able to cook for a husband, to be able to look nice so that when they were at various social events. And in fact, this is still very much the idea of a, a finishing school today. It's an idea which could scarcely be more foreign to Sarah Jane Gregory, who's enjoying her last game of pool before Eggleston Hall reopens. Yes. The 22-year-old Geordie can out-drink and out-belch the lads, and delights in vulgarity. <laughs> I don't give a shit about my appearance. I really don't. Uh. If they don't like me, then they can stick it. She's louder than the lads. <laughs> She's ruder than the lads as well. <laughs> Take that one! For finishing school veteran Jill Harbord, students like these are a daunting prospect. She taught flower arranging at Eggleston Hall in the 1980s, but to a very different breed of girl. I know very little about Claudettes because in my life, I don't actually come across them. But I have been inquiring of one or two of my greatest girlfriends um, what they know, and they've been filling me in slightly. And each time I hear any more, I become more nervous by the minute. And she's right to be. Take April Duncan. The nurse looks a picture of responsibility until she goes to the pub. Out of all my friends, I'm the one who gets the most drunk. I do like to um, be centre of attention. Middle of the rugby, just lean over and burp in someone's ear. If I'm dancing away, I might trash my boobs. Antics like these have made her well known to the pub doorman. Several times she's been ejected for being just too drunk and she gets quite verbally abusive when she's drunk. She gets uh, aggressive quite a bit. We've had to fish out the toilets for just being totally wasted. If April misbehaves at Eggleston Hall, she'll be up against a formidable opponent in the form of Rosemary Schrager. The head of cookery relishes the prospect of keeping the girls in line. 
I think it's going to be enormously tough on them because they're coming from the society where they've A, been let loose, do exactly what they long, come into an enormous amount of discipline, suddenly be told what they to do, what time they should go to bed, when they should eat, everything, what they should actually do with themselves. In fact, they're going to be crushed, absolutely crushed. <laughs> but Ladettes can have a beguiling appearance. Take this angel-faced girl. I wouldn't ever think of flashing in this country because I know it's illegal and I could get arrested for it. On holiday in Falaraki, Gemma Gunning was less inhibited. She famously flashed her breasts and paid a dreadful price. I was in total shock because I didn't think that they could put you in prison for eight months just for doing that. Gemma's parents got her out of jail in a couple of days, but now she's been sentenced to Eggleston Hall for five weeks. And that sentence begins today. Two utterly different worlds are about to collide. How's it going? How are you, how are you feeling? <laughs> how are you Time feeling? is coming very near, isn't it? How do you feel? I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of interested, slightly yes. anxious. Yes, um, same, same here. You know, we don't know. Yeah. First to arrive will be hairdresser Claire Randall. She's being driven to finishing school by her parents. What are you going to miss most, Claire, being away? Stella Artois. Hairdresser by day, amateur pole dancer at night. Claire's antics have driven her parents to despair. She's one of these new bladet, wants to be one of the lads, booze monsters. Binge drinker. I phone my mum late at night and say, Mum, I'm staying out, don't know where I am. No, actually, I'm here, but where am I? We don't know the half of it, what she gets up to. It's I think quite. She's a drunken bum. I feel a bit ashamed. I know, yeah. It does get embarrassing. We're desperate. Really desperate. Their desperation is about to be relieved. Here they are. As Claire's parents deliver their daughter to Eggleston Hall, the staff get their first glimpse of a Ladette. Who's this getting out? There you go, the midriff. Yeah. <laughs> the midriff. Pa is staying in the car. There we are. No, he's not. No, he's not. Here he's he comes. Out. Oh my gosh. Quick oh. run. Oh. Claire, I'm very pleased Hello. to meet you. I'm Jean Brooke Smith. And Mum? Hi, I'm Donna. Hello, Donna. Pleased to meet you. And husband? Yes. Her. Oh, and your name is? Marcus. Hello. Fantastic. Hello. One by one, the Ladettes arrive and are shown to their dorms. Ten of the most badly behaved women in the country are about to be thrown together for the next five weeks. Let's go and meet these other Nutters. <laughs> Some are here because they've been nominated. Others because they desperately want to change. In their different ways, these girls all know they've come off the rails and that this school is a once-in-a-lifetime chance to become a lady. <laughs> it's the first day of term at Eggleston Hall Finishing School. Ten of Britain's most notorious ladettes have been summoned to meet the staff. You are here to learn to be ladies. <laughs> and a bit of silence, please. Now, you've all seen these rules, I believe. Now, if you're caught chewing gum, it's going to be a £20 fine. There is also no drinking. You are not allowed to smoke in the house. And if you are found smoking, you are out straight away. Now, the other thing is, you've got to enjoy yourself. You've got to have fun. It's an enormous opportunity for you all. And hopefully, you are all going to turn out to be, some of you anyway, ladettes to ladies. And I wish you all the best of luck. They'll need it. The girls will be tested at a variety of social events and at least one of them will be expelled each week. Some of you won't pass the test. Some of you will have to leave. You might even have to leave in the first week. So this is not a joke. We are here to learn serious things. The Ladette's clothes are <laughs> fundamental to their identity. Who's this up? <gasps> Oh, you must be joking! 
But from now on, they'll be required to wear twin sets, A-line skirts and court shoes at all times. The Eggleston Hall uniform. Some of the ladettes have never seen clothes like these, let alone worn them. What's this? Skirt love. What is curtains? <laughs> <laughs> don't actually own a pair of tights. I don't actually own a skirt or court shoes, so today is going to be very... It's going to be really different for me. Michelle's normal uniform is a boiler suit. She's a gas fitter, distinctly lacking in feminine graces. <laughs> Her problem is that men think she's one of the lads. She's come to finishing school because she wants to be treated like a lady. It's that difference between being a girl who's more like a bloke and a girl who wants to be more like a lady. I mean, I would love to, to have the balls to walk in that calf in like a dress or a skirt, all done up and made to the nines, and walk in and order a cup of tea and just see how they'd react. I think I'll piss myself. Not very ladylike. But the uniform soon has a strangely calming effect on the ladettes. Time for the first lesson. A master class in posture and deportment with Principal Jean Broke Smith and Sarah Jane English. Don't cross your legs like this. It's really, really bad. Put a leg to the side, OK? It doesn't matter whether it's right or left, OK? But just put the other foot behind that. All right. Yeah, you've got to go the other way, underneath. That's it, like that. That's it. Great. OK, let's... Deportment was at the heart of the finishing school curriculum, and Jean Broke-Smith is one of the few surviving teachers of this lost art of poise and composure. Head up, shoulders back. <laughs> Are you worried about slipping? Yes, I've never walked in heels. I fall over in flat. You've never walked in heels? Oh, I can't stand them. I'll break my neck. Sarah Jane, the Geordie pool player, is almost unrecognisable. I must say, these little twin sets are very flattering, don't you think? Yeah. Off you yep. go. Yep, is it done? You're very pigeon-toed, aren't you? Oh, you're the classic knock-knee crab ankle. Yes. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to fall over, so I'm like, oh, walking like this, and you feel really strange. It's just, it's just not me, <laughs> really not me. Heads up, shoulders back, arch together there. Well done, super. Makes you feel very self-conscious. Oh, now you're self-conscious. I'm looking at how I'm walking and standing. Yeah, and then inadequate. Then. Feel like I walk like a navvy. <laughs> well done. The girls. A couple of the girls yesterday, I thought, oh, Lord, you know, they're going to be a little bit aggressive. They weren't at all today. You know, I think that they're taking it... I think they're taking it on board. I was, I was pleasantly surprised, actually, I have to say. The girls' next class is speech. Learning to talk like ladies means going right back to basics. Good. Elocution teacher Kate Forrester has an old-fashioned remedy for the girls' speech problems, the bone prop. This simple plastic device is designed to force the girls to pronounce their vowels correctly. So, poor, raw. That's really coming forward. So, poor, raw. But for Hayley Brisland, it doesn't seem to be doing the trick. Cake. Bake. Bake. No. <laughs> Cake. Take. No. <laughs> Not I. <laughs> Hayley was born and raised in the heart of the East End. Can I get a small tub of jelly deals, please? Cheers, love, I'm common as Mark. They call me Eliza Doolittle. I've got no ladylikeness at all. She works as a PA, but her strong accent and foul mouth are stopping her from getting ahead. What <laughs> the My boss nominated me for this. You know, this is a very rough round the edges. You need smoothing out a little. The first thing that Hayley said to us was deportment. Doesn't mean I've got to go abroad, does it? And that basically just sort of said to us that she would be an ideal candidate. They thought it'd be more of a challenge for the teachers than it would be for me, but I think we've both got our work cut out. Hey, take the train. 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 
That's much better. I sound like a No, idiot. you don't. Very good. Amazingly, the ladettes seem to be taking the school seriously. By the end of day one, the staff are so impressed, they decide to give them a treat. Hello, girls. Hello. How are you all feeling? Tired. I need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I must say, congratulations. You have done so well today that you will be allowed to go out to the pub tonight. <laughs> you can drink. I think you yeah. <laughs> I never thought that I would say, you deserve a drink. It's a decision which betrays a remarkable ignorance of her charges. The Three Tons in Eggleston is a quiet village pub, accustomed to its small collection of regulars. But when the girls arrive, they're on their very best behaviour. Even April, who is not known for her restraint on evenings out, is determined to be responsible. I'm not going to get drunk or anything like that. I think if, if anybody gets out of line, we're, we're running a huge risk of not being out, allowed out to go out again. Um, but I'm, I'm going to probably really piss everybody off tonight because I'll be like, no, do you know what I mean? If you're going to get too much, too loud, too leery, just go because don't spoil it for the rest of us. And so far, the girls do seem to be models of propriety. Good game, good game, good game. Good game. Good game. Good game. Good game. Yes, to everyone. Yes. A happy five weeks. Meanwhile, at Eggleston Hall, the staff are celebrating their success. I think that the shock and horror of various things that we were saying, you could see their faces going, no, the classic was uniforms. uniforms. Oh. <laughs> do you know what it's all about? Confidence. It's all about confidence. Yeah. Do you know, they can do it. Mm. They are going to be totally different mm. people. Mm. And that's mm. going to be very, very interesting. <laughs> very interesting. But at the Three Tons pub, things are beginning to slip. Go on, girl, a bit! The tipping point comes when the girls add spirits to their beer. The locals have never seen ladies behaving like this. Of Eggleston Hall. Of Eggleston Hall. <laughs> to get home, the girls must walk through the village. And in no time, they've disturbed one of the residents. <laughs> it's April who tries to make amends. Sorry. We do apologise. Oh, I'm Sorry. Oh, time the time. It's there, that's all. We've all got to get up early in the morning. Sure enough, the nurse has reverted to type. Back at school, the girls are in bed in time for lights out. <laughs> Did you have a nice time? We had an absolutely marvellous time. Turn your lights out. All right? Well done. See you in the morning, ready good for night. a lot of work. Good night. All right, good night. Good night. Sleep well. Amazingly, their hooliganism has escaped notice. <laughs> but in a small community, word travels fast. Will you please make your way into the hall? The following morning, as the girls prepare for flower arranging, their lesson is interrupted. Uh, it's come to my attention that after you left the pub last night, there was an incident. Uh, a gentleman phoned me 
to say that he was verbally abused with a four-letter word. I'm not going to repeat what you said to him. I really am not. But I feel that the person responsible should own up. I'm giving you 10 minutes. That's fine. It's Michelle, the oldest of the girls, who takes charge of the situation. We need a vote on this. I think what we maybe all need to go in together. How would you feel if we all went with you? I'll go in my own. No, 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 I know you would go on your own, but this yeah. is like a team thing now, and we are a team. I'm a little bit apprehensive, I have to say. But she could quite easily turn around, not lady like behave and kick me out. Simple as that. Come in. April has come to the principal's office. Everybody's coming in. But the ladettes have closed ranks around her, even though they know she's guilty. April! Yeah, fucking poor old bastard! <laughs> I didn't say any four letter word, but I did say he's a poor old bastard. I have got a loud voice, but I really don't think he could have heard me say that. I really don't. But he might have. Well, he did, and it wasn't just a boring, it was something else extra. I wouldn't have taken it. I wouldn't have said that. I wouldn't have been that aggressive, I have to say. Well, the reason the guy came out in the first place was because of the noise all of us were making. Yeah, one here. of you did call him a fucking boring bastard or something a similar. I call, I, the only... Sorry, I've got to say it because yeah, that's what yeah, he said. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. You know, and you're supposed to be ladies. You just can't get completely so drunk. Nobody we... spent more than like, like 10, 15 pounds on drinking. I can guarantee every single one of us in here takes at least 40 quid for it to get drunk. <coughs> I'm going to punish you all. Okay. You're lucky to get away with this just this once. No smoking until the end of the week. If any of you are caught smoking, you're out straight away. The Ladettes have saved April from expulsion, but the ban on smoking will punish some girls more than others. I need some nicorette patches because I will not survive this, I swear. No smoke until Friday. Wow, look at these packs, they must be desperate. She's come down on us really heavy to teach us all a lesson. This is what it's all about. It's not about the whole night of in the pub and all that. It is about Don't April say saying whatever to that bloke. This is what she's got the arse ache about. And all right, fair enough, you know, we're in this as a team, but she doesn't like that. She didn't want us all going in mob handed, but we agreed and we're a team. Their newfound solidarity will soon be put to the test. It's the third day of term at Eggleston Hall Finishing School. At breakfast, a surprise awaits the Ladettes. We've got letters, guys. An invitation to a party in one of Yorkshire's grandest country houses. Yeah. Three. 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 Yes. But this is no ordinary invitation. The party is a test, and it will lead to the expulsion of at least one of the Ladettes. To prepare for the party, the girls have a lesson in fashion and grooming. Mrs English, who taught at Lucy Clayton's finishing school, is renowned for her uncompromising candour. She has asked the girls to wear what they think will be an appropriate outfit for the party. <laughs> Sarah Jane, I'm sorry. It's, it's just not going to work. And when you're sitting down, I've got a bird's eye view. <laughs> Jessica, stand up. She looks fabulous. I think she looks absolutely oh. fabulous. Jessica Upton is not known for her sartorial restraint. This ladette is a flagrant exhibitionist. She's come to finishing school because she wants to throw off her cheap, brassy image. I want to be able to go into a posh bar or uh, the races and be able to come across as being Lady Jessica. I don't want to always come off, come across as little fucker. I want things to change. By Jessica's standards, the outfit she's wearing today is modest, but that cuts no ice with Mrs English. Not with that skirt. Everything is just too much. Also, um, it's showing off your middle, which isn't looking fantastic at the moment. Thanks for the compliment. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what do you mean it's not looking fantastic? It's, it's blobby. That's because I'm constipated at the moment. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I don't really Absolutely. want to say that because when you've just put me down, then I'll just right, tell you what. Sit down. <laughs> Teachers hate me. That's why I think I'm going to get evicted on Saturday. <laughs> they all hate me. <laughs>
But that's my personality, I'm sorry, but I'm not changing for anyone. She's got major attitude, major attitude. Um, she has a problem with everything. But we're getting there. We'll, we'll knock it out of her. Lovely dress. Can anyone no see the problem, though? Big guy's speech. Dear digger, you haven't got the booze for it. There's just nothing there, it's just a big hole. The school is called, you know, known as B flat, you know, as you fried, <laughs> as you fried eggs. <laughs> Please don't bother me. I'm happy with my boobs because I got a great <laughs> ass to make up for it, let me tell you. Oh, <laughs> one by one, the ladettes' outfits are trashed. This is not what you wear to a cocktail party. <laughs> it's just not sophisticated enough. This ladette simply isn't interested in clothes. I'm more like a lad. You know, I'll go for a game of pool, I enjoy boxing, I enjoy watching boxing and snooker and things like that. Sarita isn't just a tomboy, she's a feminist too, and will definitely be one of the hardest nuts to crack. Everyone's tried to change me in the past. You know, people have tried to say, like, wear heels and bought me clothes, and they've never been able to change me, so this will be the ultimate kind of challenge for anybody that thinks that they'll be able to change me. It needs a very good press, all right? She made no effort whatsoever to come to the class today. She wasn't interested in the class, took no participation in the class, didn't ask any questions. Complete and utter indifference. It's a waste of my time. Hello. Preparing for the drinks party isn't the only challenge faced by the ladettes. For girls who can't even thread a needle, let alone boil an egg. Rubbish. The curriculum means starting from scratch, and to avoid expulsion, they must show progress in all subjects. The curriculum has been based on the old finishing school, because what we're trying to do to them is to make them into young ladies, into society, and this is how, how to act, how to behave, and basically, in the end of the day, the finishing school, how to get married. <laughs> I would have any day. Yes! <laughs> I am really scared of getting thrown out after being in the office twice in two days. I am scared of getting thrown out. And so I'm going to be on my bestest behaviour tomorrow. The day of the drinks party has arrived. Unfortunately, not one of the girls has a suitable outfit to wear to it. But Mrs English has planned a surprise. Hello, girls. Right. Now then, you do know you're going to this cocktail party. I would like you all to follow me, please, because you will not be wearing your own clothes. What? <gasps> no! Come with me. Oh, Next door, an Aladdin's cave of outfits awaits the girls. Little black numbers, high shoes, handbags, and a host of accessories. I'm going to leave you. It is up to you. What the girls don't realise is that these items have been cunningly selected. Some are fit for ladies, others are altogether too revealing. Oh my God! And sure enough, this ladette's fallen straight into the trap. They look amazing! <laughs> Sarah Newman is a cleaner who loves to party. My friends always say I'm the only person who they would want to take to a party. I'll go out, get drunk, have a kebab, come home with a cone on my head, <laughs> you know, followed by the police. Sarah's favourite party trick involves an alco pop and her cleavage. I'm liking this. I'm going to keep this. Oh, 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 I mean, that, that's just as frumpy as frumpy can get. That's about ten sizes too big. That looks like a tunic. That's just vile. And that's just even viler. <laughs> but the girls must choose one of these dresses. Check out this. This is well nice. Gemma Gunning, jailed for flashing her breasts on Falaraki, hates all of them. 
Gemma, just try something on. I'm trying to fucking dress on and it looks shit. This is no surprise for us. Let's not get angry or anything. I don't think there's any need for that, all right? We're all trying to help each other. I'm not so You have to watch this. Gemma feels the team spirit is breaking down and the ban on smoking isn't making things any easier. I can't believe everyone's just dived in and nobody's helping each other. Do you know what I mean? We came in and we said that we're doing this as a team thing. And it's like, nobody gives a fuck, really. Nobody cares at all. And I need a cigarette like you wouldn't believe and I feel myself shaking. The girls are really stressed at the moment. We're not allowed to smoke, we haven't had a beer. And basically, we are all stressing. We've got a really big night tonight and we've been assessed on everything we've done. And it's just, it's getting too much. As they arrive at the party, the girls will be judged on their grooming and deportment. They will then have to make a good impression upon a selection of eligible bachelors. I'm as um, horny <laughs> as all the other girls. <laughs> I'm just going for a giggle, just to meet new people. So, you know, if Lord Brockett turns up, I really couldn't care less. I like blokes you can have a laugh with, not someone who's going to be, oh yes, and the price of shares have dropped today, and, you know, and went playing. Bolo yesterday, and you're going to be like, I'd find it funny if you said the old shit on my foot. That's what I'd find funny. They might think I'm a complete and utter slapper. <laughs> I think they're going to look at us all and think, God, you girls are so cheap. You cheap bitches. Underneath all that beautiful, glamorous clothing, you're still cheap little tart from the South. The drinks party is being held at a location which positively reeks of grandeur. Constable Burton, home to the Wyville family for over 200 years. As the girls arrive in a 1960 MG Roadster, the judges take their positions. It's notoriously difficult for ladies to emerge from such a low-slung vehicle, and sure enough, Sarah Jane soon makes her first mistake. It's not a good start. Although Sarah's deportment isn't bad, how ladylike is her dress? Well, I'll tell you something, she should cover up her tattoos. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a disappointment, isn't it? I mean, I think she was disappointing. Yeah, disappointing. Simple as that. The Geordie has failed the dress test. But makes a good impression on her hostess, Maggie Wyville. One by one, the girls arrive and pass through a fusillade of criticism. Dress is lovely. Oh, it's it's nice lovely. Is lovely. Claire Randall has chosen the perfect dress, but she's failed on something she should know all about. I let down. I think that, in my opinion, it's funny enough, her hair. You do I hate her hair. I hate it. I think it's, it's a bad hair cut to her hair. It's amazing. It looks like a mop. It looks terrible, doesn't it? There's worse to come. Sarita, the Glaswegian boxer. Okay, the hair's a mess, yeah. unfortunately. I don't like how she's got the scarf on her. I felt she was clumsy. She's a boxer. Sarah Newman was worried about looking cheap. But at the last moment, the cleaner had the perspicacity to choose a less revealing dress. Mm, very good. Cool. Very good. Cool. Beautiful shoes. Oh, she's the banister. You've got out the car on. Did she get out the car? Oh, did she? Mm -hmm. Okay. She gets For Michelle, who is almost six feet tall, emerging from the roadster is an ordeal. She virtually broke the roof. But the gas fitter makes up for it with a splendid performance on the stairs. But she looks lovely. Doesn't she look nice? Oh, she looks really Doesn't she? And I love her necklace too. Yes. In control. Absolutely. Thank you very much. The party itself presents numerous pitfalls. Thank you. Can I introduce 
Excuse me, Marcus. Hello. Deprived of male company for almost a week, the girls are now introduced to a selection of eligible bachelors. <laughs> These gentlemen are experienced partygoers, used to socialising with posh girls. They will not be easy to impress. So what is it you're studying at? I'm doing business finance. Business finance? Some people in this life are born to drive. Others are born to be driven. <laughs> Oh, I've never tried these. Then this is exactly what we have to try. Yeah. If the truth be known, I'm not too keen on pack anyway. <laughs> so let's just go for, for okay. this one together. Okay, one, ready? Mm, different. You don't need to pop the whole thing in, just a half. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> She'd never had a prawn before, which uh, I guess it sounds so trivial and so minor, but um, I assumed that everyone had had a prawn. How are you finding trying to speak properly anyway? Quite tired, actually. <laughs> I was talking to one of the girls, just sipping champagne, you know, it's wonderful room. I go, so um, what do you do? And they just say, well, I'm a gas fitter. I was just like... After a couple of drinks, the girls begin to lose their inhibitions. No, I think you're not stunning anymore. You Gold you sets off your hair. Thank you. Water. Water. Is that water? Beautiful. He's like James Bond when you get to him. I think it makes my tits look great, so I'm, I'm happy. Jess's bid for attention is pure ladette. There seems to be something happening. But she's about to be upstaged. People said that together we were both sides of the same coin. And we would shine like Venus. It's in a not pen. as bad as an alco pop in her cleavage, but Sarah Newman's party piece is still a terrible blunder. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Shoulda, woulda, coulda is the last words I say to you. Fortunately, her gracious hostess smooths over the damage. Oh, composure. Composure. I think they've been absolutely lovely. I think they're charming, they're very sweet. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed their company. Oh, pissed as a flaming bar, I tell you. I shouldn't have champagne. By the end of the evening, the Ladettes are intoxicated by their sense of achievement. Who fancies some chicken? Yeah. Okay, okay, ladies. We have done incredibly well. Yeah. But they're about to find out just how high the standards of Eggleston Hall really are. At Eggleston Hall Finishing School, ten ladettes are preparing for an ordeal. One by one, they must face the staff and persuade them that they have the potential to become ladies. The stakes could not be higher. When these interviews are over, two of the girls will be expelled, and a taxi is already waiting to take them away. Oh, I'm so scared. I'm 22, I'm not scared of anyone except for my mother. Michelle, would you come in? How do you think you've done in your first week? The girls must account for their performance at the drinks party and their progress in all lessons throughout the week. The cooking, you know, I just think it's brilliant. Well, can I come in here on that one? You left this in my kitchen. This must never happen again, because if you lose it, you lose it forever. Look at that. The people put the fear of God in, mate. I need a shit and I can't believe it. Last night's the hair, a disaster. Very wild and woolly, the hair. It's because we thought we'd have till about maybe half five, six o'clock to do it here. Sunita, tough. But you are so horrible to me. No, what does she do? I don't think she really cares an awful lot. I think she's a bit of a feminist, actually. I, I got that impression. April! <laughs> Look at the car. April. Can I ask you one question? Mm -hmm. Do you think you are really you? Yeah, at the school. Is it yeah. you or are you playing a game with us? No, I'm not playing a game with you. There's no point in defending yourself in here because it's you're right, we're wrong, simple as. I'm appalled at her and I think she's playing a huge game. You giggle an awful lot. Oh, but that's me. I'm a happy-go-lucky person. I spread a lot of joy and there's no one that ever that's going to change that. Effort. None. <laughs> she failed in my class. Behaviour. Silly. Mm. Stupid. Screw you, you, man. You're yourself. boring if you ain't having yeah. a giggle. Life's too short to worry about sitting there with a fucking spoon up your ass. <laughs> By late morning, the staff have seen all of the girls, and a decision must be made. 
Jill, does she go or does she stay? The arguments are finely balanced. She's a silly little girl. Anyone else did look like a slapper, but she actually did look like a flapper. I'm prepared to give her another week. She is a menace to teach. I don't think she really wants to be here. Over the next four weeks, the girls who stay at the finishing school will undergo a huge transformation. Ultimately, only one girl will win the coveted Eggleston Hall prize. Yes, that's it, she's out. Goes. Goes. Very interesting. We've discussed your merits, and we have a mixture of good and bad news. Hayley, hmm. Hayley has had a mixed week. She made a good impression at the party. Take. But her behaviour in class has irritated the teachers. This inane giggle, great. Best, your opinion. Your attitude this morning was unbelievable. We said something and you had an answer back. You have been saved by your appearance last night. You did well. And you can stay this week. But, you know, the bolshiness has got to go. Understood. Last night, Sarita's appearance got the thumbs down. And she doesn't seem to have made up for it in any of the lessons. Rubbish. I don't think your heart's really in it. I'm afraid we've decided to invite you to leave. I'm very sorry. The Ladettes knew that one of them was for the chop. But their ordeal is not over yet. Sarah Jane. For a hardened tomboy, Sarah Jane has been taking it remarkably seriously. But at last night's party, the Geordie made one big mistake. I was really quite disappointed when you flaunted your tattoos last night. And you know, you started off so well. However, Mrs. Harbord was impressed with you greatly in class, so you can stay. Thank you. April. April certainly has plenty to fear after her outburst in the village. You're fucking a poor old bastard! <laughs> Since then, she's been a model of propriety. Even her belching has become more ladylike. Will that save her? Well, you know what happened in the first few days. We were absolutely appalled. However, you've got some good ladylike qualities, so at the moment you can stay. Michelle. <laughs> Michelle got off to a pretty unladylike start. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> but the gas fitter has worked hard. Absolutely perfect. And last night, she surpassed expectations. That's she looked nice. Well done. Top marks. Dress sense. Posture great. You know you need more makeup. Uh, you can stay. Gemma. For a girl with a famous decolletage, Gemma's dress last night was a model of restraint. But she had worn it under protest. I'm not so you I don't think you actually believe the values of a finishing school. I'm afraid you're going to have to leave straight away. Right, those two girls now who have got to go, a taxi is waiting outside. Thank you. The Ladettes can scarcely believe the severity of the verdicts. The expulsion of two girls has come as a terrible shock. I felt really sick. Just, just, just for the other girl, I just really could have spewed. That was horrible. Oh, that was too, was much, so horrible. too much to take. That is just like a right kick up the... Just a right kick, because we've all just really got to start behaving ourselves now. It's still a real, sur a complete surreal situation for me. I mean, I'm sitting here in skirt and shoes, man, you know what I mean? It's just, it's sheer madness. And <laughs> I really, I, I've been really, really trying. I really have. I mean, I, I wrote seven pages on bloody flower arranging. I'll show you, look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. The remarkable fact is that these Ladettes desperately want to stay at Eggleston Hall. I can't believe they've sent two people home. I really am so... I'm just so shocked about it. And those girls must just be feeling... I can't imagine how they're feeling. Life is too short to get upset. So, I'm not getting upset. I'm not bothered at all that I got expelled. Um, I'm actually very happy because in the first couple of days I realised I don't want to be changed. 
I mean, changing my dress sense and to clothes that was very uncomfortable in any way is not going to change my personality. And I knew that from day one. And I thought, oh God, I'm going to at least have to stick out a week, which I did. The expelled girls are sent off in true Ladette style. But for those who stay on, behaviour like this will soon become a thing of the past. No, no, I, think, I think we made the right decision, Jean. Definitely. Yes. Definitely. <laughs>